Date, day date, moon phase, and jump hour. A mechanical watch complication is any function that does more than display hours, minutes, and seconds. The simplest one is the date display. A date complication uses a numbered disc under the dial. As the movement advances past midnight, a small finger on the gear train pushes the disc forward by one step, revealing the next number in the window. Most watches place this window at the three o'clock position because humans apparently decided that is the least annoying place to interrupt a dial. Variations include a subdial date, which isolates the date on a small circular register, and a pointer date, where an extra hand points to the date printed around the edge of the dial. The mechanical process is identical, only the display changes. A day date complication adds the day of the week. It uses an additional disc, usually underneath the date disc. Both advance during the nightly gear train cycle, although some movements split the change over several hours to avoid breaking themselves. Always a considerate feature. The typical layout keeps both displays together, but some watches separate them for symmetry or drama. A moon phase complication tracks the lunar cycle through a rotating disc decorated with two identical moons. The disc advances every 24 hours by a small fraction, completing one full cycle in 29.5 days. The tiny aperture simply reveals whichever moon happens to be passing by. It is not the most essential tool for modern survival, but it remains one of the most visually charming components ever attached to a gear train. A jump hour complication replaces the hour hand with an hour disc that snaps instantly to the next number at the 60 minute mark. A spring stores tension throughout the hour and releases it at once, forcing the disc to jump cleanly. The display stays digital even though the mechanism is fully mechanical. Triple calendar, annual calendar, and perpetual calendar. A triple calendar, also called a complete calendar, displays the date, the day of the week, and the month. Mechanically, this system uses three separate discs, one for the date, one for the day, and one for the month. The movement advances the date disc daily. The month disc advances when the date wheel transitions from the 31st to the 1st. Because the mechanism does not know how many days each month contains, the wearer must manually correct it five times per year. It is one of the simplest full calendar systems, which explains its popularity and its tendency to ask you to do some of its work for it. An annual calendar adds another layer of logic. Its mechanism can mechanically distinguish between months with 30 and 31 days. It uses a programmed cam with irregular notches representing each month's length. As the date wheel moves, a lever reads the cam and stops the date from advancing to the 31st when it should not. This reduces manual correction to once per year at the end of February. The annual calendar does not track leap years, so when the movement enthusiastically tries to display February 30th, the owner must intervene. A perpetual calendar is the most sophisticated mechanical calendar complication. It tracks the date, the day, the month, and the leap year cycle. Inside, a multi-year cam with specifically shaped steps determines the number of days per month and accounts for the leap year 29 day February. A series of levers, springs, and programmed wheels decode this cam and advance each display. A well-made perpetual calendar will remain accurate for decades without adjustment as long as the movement never stops, which is a polite way of saying please use a watch winder. It is one of the most technically demanding complications and therefore one of the most expensive. Chronograph types and the tachymeter scale. A chronograph is a mechanical stopwatch built into a standard timekeeping movement. It adds a secondary gear train that can be started, stopped, and reset independently using push on the case. When the chronograph is running, a clutch or cam system links the central seconds hand and the sub dials to the main movement. When it is stopped, the system disengages so the watch can continue keeping time without interference. The mechanism is complex because it requires precise engagement and disengagement without causing the hands to jump or stall. A single pusher chronograph performs all three actions, start, stop, and reset through one button. This setup uses a sequential cam system that cycles through the three states each time the pusher is pressed. It is less flexible than a dual pusher design, but historically significant, especially in early 20th century watches. Modern examples are rare because convenience eventually won the argument. A flyback chronograph resets and restarts instantly with a single press of the reset pusher. Instead of stopping, resetting, and starting in three steps, the flyback system drops the chronograph wheels back to zero and immediately reconnects them. Pilots used it to time rapid maneuvers without Without losing seconds during reset. In short, it is a complication designed to help you measure things faster, assuming you're doing something more thrilling than reheating leftovers. A split seconds chronograph, also called a ratrapante, uses two central seconds hands 
stacked on top of each other. One runs continuously with the chronograph. The other can be stopped independently to record an intermediate time. Pressing the catch up pusher makes the stopped hand instantly rejoin the running hand. This allows timing of two simultaneous events, such as athletes in a race or parallel tasks you definitely swear you will remember. A tachymeter scale sits on the bezel or dial perimeter. It converts elapsed time into a rate per hour. After timing a fixed unit of distance, you read the scale next to the chronograph seconds hand. The when number indicates how many units per hour that pace equals. It is simple proportional math translated into a circle of numbers and optimism, time zone complications, dual time, GMT, and world time. A dual time complication displays two different time zones, usually using an additional hour hand. This secondary hand follows a 12 hour scale, which means it behaves exactly like a normal hour hand, but is independently adjustable. The mechanism uses an extra gear train linked to the main movement, allowing the wearer to set the second time zone without disturbing the primary one. Because both hands share the same 12-hour cycle, distinguishing day from night requires either a day-night indicator or basic human memory. A GMT complication also displays a second time zone, but it uses a 24-hour scale. The fourth hand completes one rotation per day instead of two. A fixed or rotating bezel printed with 24-hour markings provides the reference. Mechanically, the GMT hand is driven by a reduction gear that halves its rotational speed relative to the main hour hand. This difference in scale is the key distinction. Dual time equals 12 hours. GMT equals 24 hours. In practice, the GMT function is far easier to read at a glance because the hand's position immediately indicates day or night in the track location, preventing accidental calls at 3 in the morning, unless that is the goal. A world time complication displays all 24 global time zone simultaneously. It uses an inner rotating 24 hour ring and an outer fixed ring listing major cities. The inner ring completes one revolution every 24 hours. When the wearer aligns their local city with the correct time on the inner ring, the remaining cities automatically display their corresponding hour. Mechanically, the complication uses a continuously driven disc linked to the movement's hour wheel through a reduction gear. The system is deceptively simple visually but extremely demanding to engineer because the discs must remain perfectly synchronized without drifting. It remains one of the most distinctive and instantly recognizable complications ever created. Tourbillon and Minute Repeater. A tourbillon is a rotating cage that holds the balance wheel, the balance spring, and the escapement. In a normal movement, these components sit in a fixed position and gravity affects their oscillation differently depending on orientation. The tourbillon attempts to average out these positional errors by rotating the entire assembly, usually once per minute. It. The mechanism requires extremely precise machining because the cage must be both rigid and lightweight to avoid disrupting the amplitude of the balance wheel. Historically, the tourbillon provided genuine accuracy benefits for pocket watches, which spent most of their day in a single upright position. On a wristwatch where the watch constantly changes orientation, the improvement is marginal. Today, its primary purpose is to demonstrate mechanical mastery and to justify price tags that could finance a small car. A minute repeater is one of the most complex acoustic complications in horology. When the slide or lever on the case is activated, it winds a separate spring that powers a system of racks, snails, and hammers. These components translate the current time into a sequence of chimes. The mechanism traditionally strikes the hours first, then the quarter hours, then the remaining minutes. For example, if the time is 10.57, the repeater will chime 10 low tones, three double chimes for the three quarter hours, and seven high tones for the remaining minutes. The system uses a set of shaped cams, known as snails, to read the exact position of the hour, quarter, and minute mechanisms. The hammers strike thin metal gongs fixed around the movement, and the quality of the sound depends on the steel's hardness, the case's internal volume, and the precision of the hammer's striking angle. The complexity of coordinating this mechanical code into clear tones is why minute repeaters are rare, expensive, and usually assembled by watchmakers with enough patience to rival saints. There's a great video on the screen now, don't miss it, okay?